Yeah, I'm Sarah Ostaszewski. I live in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm originally from the Chicago area, lived in Portland for like seven years and have been up in Flag for about a year and a half now. Um, yeah, I actually ran the f like first year of Cocodona and that was a big influence on moving to Flagstaff. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I live in Flag. Um, Enjoy all the running up here, yeah. Yeah, so you're all in for Cocodona then. All moved in, moved yeah. to Arizona for Cocodona because yeah. you love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> Life changing experience for sure. Oh, I bet. And this is this will be your third time. You're doing Cocodona in less than two weeks. So let's like backtrack two ish years then to the first edition of Cocodona. Like, one, why would you want to run 250 miles in Arizona basically just to get home? <laughs> yeah. I think when Air Viper first announced it, I forget if it was 2020, it might have been 2020 when they first kind of um, announced that they were doing this 250 mile race. I somehow heard about it and thought it'd be a neat thing, cool opportunity to try something new. I hadn't been thinking about like jumping up in distance. I don't know if I've ever thought like of, you know, logical steps. I think that's how it's been with me for ultra running. Um, like starting from a 60k and essentially working my way up but it wasn't like oh i'm gonna do 200s now i th i thought that the course looked really cool um like just a point to point thing flagstaff was kind of this mysterious place where all these pro runners trained and um obviously like jim jared like living up there training um i'm just like yeah that's a really cool spot i i thought it would be <laughs> really neat to finish a race there in downtown flagstaff and just yeah, along the way, see a lot of Arizona. Um, I had been doing some other Air Vibe events like Black Canyon and Javelina, but like obviously Cocodona is something way different. Um, and the course would be totally new. Like I hadn't been running really in, on, along any of it um, like before I had signed up. So um, yeah, it was just, yeah, a cool new, completely new opportunity that I was really excited about that kind of got me in. Yeah, because you, you had done Havelina and a couple other hundreds prior, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a few hundreds and then some 20. I <laughs> I used to really love the uh, 24 hour timed events. Um, and that's, yeah, you know, I liked loops um, that and I would aim for over 100 miles there um, at those types of things. But yeah, I just I, I didn't think of it like Am I experienced enough? Like, should I be signing up for a 250 mile race? I had no idea. I just, I'm like, I'm gonna somehow figure it out and, and do it, so. <laughs> and you figured it out twice already. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm still figuring it out, I'd say. I don't think I've <laughs> nailed it, but learning for sure, learning a lot, I think both years. Yeah, like just thinking about like jumping from 100 to 200 plus, like it's a big difference. Like running 100 miles is hard. Like I've never run 100 miles to be honest. Like I've, I've hiked it, I've done that like many times, but like running it's just like, I almost can't even fathom it to be honest. But then like 200 and 200 plus is just incredible. And like last year I was pacing Jeff Browning at uh, the lab 240. Uh -huh. And that was a new experience for him as well. Like he's done like hundreds, like tons of hundreds done really well. But then like 240 was just like, <laughs> okay, this is the plan. And like after a while it was like, we're making a new plan because whatever. So like, <laughs> yeah. did you have a plan going into your first Coca Dota and that, did that change like crazy once you um, were actually out there? <laughs> yeah, I probably had somewhat of a plan. So m my sister, my twin, Melissa, and then uh, she was kind of crewing and pacing and our mom actually came out to like drive the crew vehicle. So it was like kind of a team of three with me running. Um, I think I tried to come up with some sort of pace chart, but that went out the window like immediately. <laughs> just, I had no way of knowing like how long any of those sections would take. Like I hadn't been on any of the course beforehand. So <clears throat> I think I had a rough plan of like, yeah, I'll probably need to sleep at some point. I need to keep eating, you know, like <laughs> very loose plans. But I think I didn't have any expectations, which was kind of nice. I was just like, I, I would crawl to the finish line if that's what it took to finish it. I just wanted to make it through the course, make it to the finish line. And that was going to be good enough um, because of the experience, like just being out there was that intriguing. And I was just looking forward to it literally just being out there all week. <laughs> so I think I just went with the flow for most of it and kind of, um, took it section by section or mile by mile and um, just really enjoyed it. I think it turned out well. Um, I don't feel like I had, I mean, there were low points, but I don't feel like anything went 
so drastically wrong that was like, you know, taking me off course, you know, just like, I don't think I had things going horribly wrong to be that discouraged throughout any of it. Um, yeah, I don't know, somehow it just came together and I made it to Flagstaff, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's super interesting because I, I feel like things always go wrong, right? Oh, yeah. But like, maybe going in with the mindset of like, I'm just going to go do this and like see how it plays out. But then also when it's such a longer event, like it's a lot lower intensity, like compared right. to say Havelina. Exactly. That's yeah. what I learned at finishing. Because like, <laughs> so at the time I was living in Portland, came down, raised Cocodona, and then I stayed, uh, Melissa and I stayed for an extra week and did really all the trail running we could do with some friends up there so like we did Humphreys we did the slabs we did Elden look at like um just fun stuff in Flagstaff and I'm like how am I able to like I felt okay you know post-race doing all of that but I think it did come down to like just running at that low intensity for that long like yeah it's a long way to go it's a lot of miles but yeah the intensity is not the same as like racing Javelina or trying to stay on pace like you know like if you've ever done marathons too it's like all about the pace <laughs> yeah and you always feel like crap after a marathon too like they, <laughs> yeah. they hurt really bad because you're running at a higher intensity the entire right time. like like i've never done 200 either like whatever it's intriguing to me the distance and everything and it's interesting to hear like people's recovery because some people like were like oh man i couldn't run for two months and others are like i was fine like because i went so slow like they're able just to recover really fast because they're eating the entire time drinking the entire time versus like a 50k where it's like yeah, you feel like you can get away with some things in like 50k, 50 mile even. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, I, I, you're not going to get away with the same stuff at a 250 mile race. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Like, it seems like if you start, like, if you bury yourself initially, then you have another 200 plus miles to go. Like, it's a long time to go when you're already wrecked. Yeah, yeah. So what did you learn then from the first one? Because you said you didn't really have any like low or bad experiences necessarily, but like, did you learn a lot of things from like that first however many hours it took you to run that yeah it took me like just under 100 hours it was like 99 okay hours and some change um what did i learn um i think i learned a lot i think it was just a big confidence boost like to cover that much ground in a week was like it was huge volume like yeah. i had obviously never done anything like that i had never done a multi-day type of thing like that ever um so to just complete something like that is um, it just, I feel like it opened a lot of like, put like possibilities, like, oh, what else could I do? Um, if that, if I, you know, I went into that and was able to do it and kind of went, <laughs> it went pretty well, I would, I would say. So I think just like confidence in, um, you know, more trail and ultra stuff, bigger, bigger things. Um, I think I just had more questions like, what else can I do? You know, like, yeah. I, obviously I'm like, I'm going to do it again <laughs> to improve. <laughs> in different ways but um yeah i feel like it's so different than some shorter races um again i'm still trying to figure out the 250 mile race strategy i think but i'd like yeah. to be good at like multi-day stuff so this is that's kind of why really? i'm ba coming back yeah <laughs> so you, you kind of feel like like kokodona was almost like a gateway to oh, like yeah. multi-day fkts or events yeah i wouldn't say, i don't know if i'd say fkts but definitely multi-day stuff yeah for sure that's interesting. <laughs> definitely a gateway <laughs> well and it's interesting too because like i look up to like through hikers and people doing multi-day things mm -hmm. or even fkts um kind of in that realm because those aren't supported like kokodona is still a supported thing where it's like you know we know of some folks who are coming back for the third year and again third year without crew they're just using drop bags that's like super impressive but it is like a supported event there are other people out there you have aid stations so yeah i, I feel like i want to get good at this so that i can gain some skills to then do the like solo multi-day stuff um and feel like more comfortable you know going out for something like that yeah no, it's really interesting now like it kind of like i know like it kind of happens with running and triathlons and stuff it's like oh like i did a, a 10k so now i'm gonna do a half marathon then a marathon and then a <laughs> yeah whatever i'm gonna do a half iron man then an iron man but it seems so interesting that like I don't know, I guess looking back, I just have a lot of friends that have done 200 plus mile events uh -huh. and they're just like, they're really polarized on it. It's like, that really sucked and I don't want to do that again. Or that was an interesting experience after they like process everything. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe I'll go Forget back. Forget the pain, yeah. Yeah, and you went back for a second time. Yeah. Um, so how did that one go? Cause... So yeah, the first year, it's like I just love, I had such a good experience in Arizona um, for the second year. Like I, <laughs> between the first year of running Cocodona and the second 
that next May, um, yeah, I moved to Flagstaff because Arizona's <laughs> great. I loved the landscape. Um, Flagstaff is a great place to be, especially if you're a runner. But yeah, I felt like I had not something to prove, but I'm just like, I can do it better and um, make some changes during the race to like have a better result, better outcome, I guess. Um, I think I think more about the process and like enjoying the process of the race more than the results like results are fine but I, that's never really my focus but I was I was like yeah I probably made some mistakes I could probably you know spent too much time sleeping <laughs> wasted time in a station so I'm like I could run it again well so I was just curious I'm like how much better can I run a 250 mile race so yeah of course and, and it was such a I had such a good time with um, a lot of the folks out on the course and everything, I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't I go back? So, <laughs> yeah, went back for the second year. And I think that went well, but I had, like, going back to a race, I think you always have some expectations of what you can do. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I, a pace chart didn't really work. The course was different. They ended up rerouting a lot of it. So the first, what, first 100K was, like, way faster going through Prescott compared to the Bradshaws. Um, mm -hmm. I liked both. I mean, I like the Bradshaws. I like flowy trails like in Prescott. So I thought that was fun. I didn't mind the course change, but. Yeah, because that year was modified, right? Yeah. So it started in Prescott versus Black Canyon. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was all Prescott pretty much for, I want to say the, f yeah, the first whole day until you get to Whiskey Row. And then, yeah, obviously they had some other course changes like in Sedona, I think for the better. Um, yeah, so it's like, I couldn't really compare like data like my times you know on certain sections but yeah I think just living in flag knowing more of the course and saying like okay I've done it once like um yeah just more expectations like from me like from within like trying to do better yeah <laughs> and I, I do thinking back like having done it a slightly different way this for like the second time um I think, yeah, there's definitely a balance between like just enjoying the whole thing versus like constantly trying to think about like, well, should I be running fast? You know, like just compare, making comparisons with what I had previously done. And that kind of took some of the fun out of it a bit for me. <laughs> Not that it wasn't fun, but just, yeah, different kind of pressure, I think. Yeah, is because like you went in the first time like zero expectations like just to finish, and the second time you have like hard numbers to yeah. push yourself against. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there were some sections for sure where I'm like, oh god, last year I felt great on this section, like I was running this. Um, yeah, but I mean, you just you can't plan for everything, like how you're gonna feel on certain sections when you're like three days into something like that. So. <laughs> yeah, and there's just like so many variables. I think like just going back to like running a 50k, like yeah, there's variables there for sure. But like, I don't know. Like it's interesting in 200 plus mile events where like you could have a really awful section for even like 50 miles, and then suddenly, from what I've been told, like feel good, and it's like well now we're gonna run and like actually run and not just shuffle or walk. Yeah, or I think you have to keep that in mind because it's like yeah, you still have a long way to go. You can't get. I was getting down on myself. I think last year on some sections and that like then I was shuffling along, you know, going slower. When it's like if I really thought about it, I probably could have been running for sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but do you think that kind of comes with like experience like the first time doing it you're just kind of like okay like this is no expectation the second time you're like I've learned so much and like I know that I can run because I've done this before does that really help a lot like the yeah mental aspect? yeah and I think that is kind of what I'm going into um Cogadona with this year yeah because <laughs> I will if I walk like uh, the Fort Todd Hill to the Walnut Canyon section was like so brutal. Like it, it's not even a tough section to me. Like mm -hmm. it's pretty straightforward. It's not, you know, a bunch of climbing or anything like that. Yeah. Last year I walked probably most of it because I just wasn't feeling great. So if I am walking that section this year, I will hate myself. So I will not be walking. <laughs> so you're not going to enjoy the process. It's all about the finish for you All this about year. the finish. No, yeah, I think I'm just, I need to do this year. It's not... I mean, results would be nice. Like I'd like to PR on like what will be more like the original course. Mm -hmm. So sub 99 hours, um, I would like to also like I podiumed last year. So 
that's kind of always in your mind, like, can I podium again? Yeah. Can I get top 10? Um, but I think mostly I'm just like, I need to do my best on each section, break it up and like, am I running my best right now on this section? So. Is that for, I feel like in, at least for me personally, like I do like a whatever, even like a 50K, longer-ish, like it's ultra technically, I guess. Right? Yeah. But it's like, I always like, I break everything up by aid stations. Like the next uh -huh. aid station is five miles. And then after that is 4.7 or whatever. Are you doing that a lot with Cocodona? Otherwise it's like probably really overwhelming. Like I ran 25 miles and I still have 225 <laughs> more. Like that's such a huge number to grasp. So do you do a lot of like those mental kind of like quote unquote tricks to get through something Yeah, like that? for sure. I think breaking up by aid stations is the way to go really with any ultra, but with Cocodona, the sections are pretty long. And if you're hiking or walking, like if you're out there for a long time between aid stations and the aid stations, it's like you have your crew there, you can get your pacer. So it is a nice break from, especially the first section because you, you don't have anybody in the Bradshaws. Yeah. We're all just running until, like for me, I think I won't um, pick anybody up. I don't even know if I'll see crew or anybody until like Whiskey Row. So like that's a long time yeah. out in the Bradshaws kind of just <laughs> working through stuff on your own. So yeah, Cocodona especially when you come to an aid station. And I'm, yeah, I mean, a, a goal is to not spend too much time in aid stations, but you, it is nice to see crew and you do end up wanting to take more time to chat or whatever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with people because you haven't seen like maybe you're running with I, I think I'm trying to think back I've probably shared a lot of miles with people out on the course but yeah you're just out there for longer longer periods of time between aid stations so it makes them that much better when you finally like to see people again and yeah I get to take a little break yeah, I imagine it's kind of like whenever I go like backpacking, for example, I don't see people for two days and some random person's like, what are you doing? And it's like, a human to talk yeah. to. It's like somebody's yeah. going to listen to me and like wants to hear about my journey, yeah. even though they don't really understand it. It's, I imagine it's kind of like that, like, but to like play less time in between. Like, yeah, yeah. Like spend two days. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's awesome. That's like but it means a lot, though. Like, yeah, when you finally get back and can can chat with somebody yeah totally like even just on like shorter runs like just like today in the canyon it's like oh just people are just friendly like that gave me so much motivation it's like you know what life doesn't suck like, yeah i'm so grateful to be able to be here doing this right now even if my body feels like crap like it is a motivational boost just to like make a joke with somebody right, right? yeah exactly yeah that's i'm hoping to absorb all of that like we're really just out there for fun like we're out there to enjoy a week of running through Arizona, you mm -hmm. know, so. Like a very diverse part of Arizona Oh too. yeah, like, the best part of Arizona. <laughs> yeah, in your opinion, <laughs> Sedona queen over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk more then about crew, because like crew is important, say like Western states, so you have a dial, but it's like, those crew interactions are like, here's a bottle, here's some ice and go. Uh -huh. So like, what is the value of like, having a solid crew in a 250 versus just like, okay, my, my grandma and grandpa came out to give me water bottles. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a little more than just handing somebody like their second pack or like filling water bottles for sure. I think just like it's been fun because my Melissa, my twin, has mm -hmm. been out for both years now. She'll be coming back and we just goof off like, you know, we know each other so well, too. So I think even without me saying specifically what I need she can infer what I will need for mm -hmm. the next section or like she has she's given instructions like I've learned after the fact like she's given instructions to pacers like Sarah just talk her ear off like just keep talking like keep her awake like she's she'll give people uh instructions on what to what to do if they're joining me for a section which is really nice so I think like if you can kind of goof off and have fun with your crew like yeah there's nothing better than that I I do think it's helpful to have some kind of plan because like you probably need to sleep at some point crew's probably gonna have to wake you up from a power nap um they'll probably you know be asking you a million questions on like what do you want to eat all that's like basic stuff but yeah just having some people out there to kind of um help you with those tasks and i think like i don't <laughs> I feel like I was pretty coherent both years, like throughout the entire race, but I know there were probably moments where they're like, no, you were not like, <laughs> you didn't know what was going on. So um, yeah, just people to keep you on track a bit because I think a couple days in it just, you know, gets a little weirder than just a hundred mile. <laughs> yeah, it's like, for my personal experience, like I paced at hundreds and I've also paced um, like at longer events. I paced Mike McKnight and Jeff Brown uh -huh. and stuff and like, 
it's interesting because like at 100 it's like yeah you can kind of like bs your way through some stuff with people it's like you get them to the end like whatever uh-huh. and like to a certain extent you do that at longer races too but it's like you have to really know that person i feel like and know yeah. what they want and like how they're gonna be when they're really yeah. tired or really <laughs> hungry or whatever mm-hmm. right yeah yeah so yeah. i'm sure having like a twin like obviously you guys are very connected so it's like having that and her knowing is probably exactly she probably knows exactly how you're feeling and what you want to a certain extent <laughs> yeah it's just yeah it's fun whether she's pacing or crewing yeah um also it's different i think with family like she's family you know it's mm-hmm. like sometimes i i think i it's like i'd rather be on good behavior if i have like a new <laughs> new person coming to help me it's like i don't want them i want them to have a good time i also yeah. care about my crew and pacers I don't want to come into an aid station like super grumpy so yeah Yeah, um but i think we all know that right that like there's probably gonna be grumpy low points and it's like i don't think most crew get offended by that yeah at least in my opinion yeah it's like you can maybe you know stop being friends for a little bit or like you know it's forgivable uh, because it was during a race or whatever but yeah i mean for the most part just i try to keep it positive and not get too <laughs> grumpy or, yeah. or mad or snappy um and i think last year there were some instances instances like on the course with one of my pacers and I, I was like getting a little snappy or like the first year melissa likes to make fun of me for like that walnut canyon section again she's uh-huh. like you turned into a different person and i'm like i was tired like i didn't know what was going on. like i was losing it because i was about to like i knew i was about to like fall asleep on the trail and yeah. we just had to get to that aid station so um yeah, those moments I look back on, and that's something that I would like to improve upon. Like, I don't want to be that person, like, just, you know, mad or snappy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, yeah, just, it's not the character that I want to have, like, during, even if it's during a tough, challenging race. Um, so I think this year I'm going to do my best to to not do that. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it, because I think maybe we all like kind of think about that at events. Like, I don't want to be that person that's like pissed off at my crew or something, but I've never really thought of like running as like like a character building, like emotional building thing. And it seems like everything comes out in, out in the open at Cocodona, for example, or Bigfoot or Moab or whatever. So it's interesting that you bring that up. I don't know really what the question is from there, but I just find it fascinating that like you're looking at it in that perspective. Like I can yeah. become a better person by running this extremely long oh yeah for sure i think it's like you hopefully are learning a lot about yourself every race you do cocodona is nice because you have essentially a week to be learning things (laughs) (laughs) yeah no like i I agree it's like it's a long time to be out there and like there's just so much going on Uh i mean plus you see other people too and it's like okay you want them to have a good experience Mm -hmm. even probably more so like we say you, you love the area so much like you want these people that are visiting to be like, oh, you had a great experience in Arizona. Yeah. Even if you are suffering a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so real quick thing, because I have both got stuff coming up in a minute, but let's talk about your nutritional strategy and like how did, has that changed from like Cocodona 1, Cocodona 2, and then what you're going to do at Cocodona 3. <laughs> oh this man, year. yeah, Cocodona 1, I think I was pretty much just like eating out of aid stations, you know, like whatever sounded good, mm-hmm. I would get it. Uh, Air Vipa, it's like they have so many different options for p- hot food, um, prepared things. I think it is a little, like I, I am trying to be this year for sure more efficient. Like I don't want to come into an aid station. There's so much time between aid stations. You should be thinking about like, well, what am I going to get next? What do I need mm-hmm. to do at this next aid station? So, you know, I think I, in the past two years, I've spent a little too much time like trying to make decisions at aid stations. And it's like, what did they have? how much time does it take to cook it um i'm gonna wait for these pancakes (laughs) um yeah i think first and second years yeah seeing what was available seeing what sounded good um this year i think i'll be a little more i don't want to say self-sufficient because the crew will have i think some i've told them like (laughs) if something's at the aid station get it and i will take it to go um and walk and eat I will use like spring or maybe some scratch chews or trail butter packets um, for sure between aid stations. And I think that's nice, um, quick energy where you're not waiting around for something heavier. Um, and then for sure tailwind, which is a lot of calories and nice between aid stations. Yeah, I'm gonna use caffeine, I think this year. I learned a bit 
like at Run Rabbit last fall, uh, I kind of like tapered off caffeine use and then like used it a little more strategically during the race. And I think it helped. So yeah, gonna test out some things with um, caffeine for like nighttime sections. Um, yeah, and I think just have a more limited um, focused like list of options for what I want to eat. Like I'm not gonna, if, if something's not in an aid station, I'm not gonna be like, well, what else can they make? You know, I'm not gonna spend more time making decisions, gonna keep decision making simple and stick to some of like some more basic things instead of, um, I don't know. I think I tried a lot of different things this last year at aid stations because they had a lot of different uh, interesting options. And I think I just, I'd rather just stick to, you know, sometimes the slice of pizza is, is nice, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, just keep it simple, I think, and not be making too many decisions at every single point. Yeah, I think from my perspective, like having been at the event so much, like it seems like it's almost like decision fatigue. Like you're tired yeah. and it's like, now make a decision. You want pancakes or hamburger? You're like, like I'm so tired, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> no, but just think about like how much brain power and mental yeah. energy goes into like just thinking about stuff. But if you already like, see you only have like five options, it's like that's five less choices to say than the 10 they have at the aid station, <laughs> yeah. which could translate to like a lot of time saving. Mm -hmm. Like it sounds kind of silly because it's like not physical energy, but like your brain is a huge Yeah, you're still, stock. yeah, I'm like, crew when everyone's asking you questions like it's too much it's too much so gonna avoid that and also like like i said take easy things to go and not sit because last year like at that Munns Park aid station, that aid station was great. They had like tempeh sandwiches, like I got one of those, but I was like sitting down eating. And then I, you know, did the out and back, came back, was sitting down eating a slice of pizza. I'm like, Ooh, sitting in a sleeping bag, like, oh, don't really want to leave because it's cold. So like, yeah, avoid that. I will not be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I don't, even like just this morning before running, I'm like, it's so cold. I don't want to get up and do anything. I want to get out of bed. <laughs> it's like, and I didn't even ran. Like I imagine if I had done 150 miles and it's like, I mean, this warm, comfortable place. Like, so just thinking of that then too, it's like, do you feel like, I don't know, like almost like these comforts they have are a detriment for most people versus like just pushing people out of the aid station? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a detriment. I think it's, it depends on what kind of experience you're like aiming to have. Like you can take all the comforts and spend as much time as you want sitting down, sleeping in sleeping bags, um, you know, going off the course booking a hotel for the night and coming back to the course and like I think it depends just like what your goals are what kind of experience you want to have I hope to be very efficient this year <laughs> and I like last year I think I made a lot of progress in like race day is race day and like other things are for adventure stuff like for fun for soul pure just solely for fun and race day is kind of a like a different type of challenge I want to be pushing myself more. So yeah, race week for Coca Dona, it's like I gotta, you know, not indulge in all the comforts that may be along the course. <laughs> that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Like it makes a ton of sense to me. And I th like, again, still have, I think you can have fun with that. Like I've been trying to find the balance, but it doesn't have to be super serious. But I think I want to get better at like, racing like race strategy yeah um and efficiency is a lot to do has a lot to do with that yeah yeah that's like i think efficiency is something that really huge especially among elites and you see this probably more so or it's easier to see i guess like either at a triathlon mm. or western states mm -hmm. where like literally western states is like they come in maybe sit down for a second it's like ice ice you have the whole crew everything's that's what dialed. it takes yeah and like to win you need because you can lose 20 30 minutes which is a lot of time like, yeah maybe less so during Cocodona, but still though like if you lose two to three hours that's a, a lot of yeah lot of mileage, and there are quite a few aid stations too so if you're spending you know a few hours there a few hours and, you know yeah. all along the course yeah it adds up i i have not added up all my like stopped time for like both years um but yeah it's a lot so yeah <laughs> i almost don't want to think about it <laughs> i guess it would probably just suck if you like got to the finish line like oh i could have beat my pia or my record but i spent 12 oh. extra minutes on eldon because i was cold <laughs> or complaining or something right oh eldon's like the best part yeah <laughs> it powered i felt like i powered up that thing last year 
because it was familiar, you know, and I'm like, yeah. oh, it's not that it's not that long of a climb. Mm -hmm. This year might be a little slower just because of the conditions, but yeah, I think it's gonna be really interesting because like that first year, Cocodona was so hot going so up hot. to Crown King, and then this year is like there, we've had so much rain and snow. It's gonna be interesting, I guess. And then I'm, I'm assuming a lot of people too are just training in the snow, and they have to come and run, and it might be pretty warm, like leaving Black Canyon. So, I don't know, be interesting, but yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, I guess one minute pitch, I guess, almost is like, not pitch, but like, what's your goal for this Cocodona? And then um, what do you want to learn from it? Just real quick. Uh, specific goals? Yeah, what are, what are your goals besides just have fun? Because everyone says that, but I know everybody has goals. Yeah, I truly want to have fun. I want to enjoy the process. I want to be super efficient, cut down on all that aid station time. And again, I, I think breaking it up into sections, like I have two years of kind of comparisons, not that I am trying to like, compare things and um but i think knowing how certain sections felt and how i felt on those sections i i'm going to be constantly questioning myself like am i doing my best right now um for how i'm feeling this year so i think that'll be like a win to like know that i gave it everything this year <laughs> i think i I, it's crazy to it's kind of crazy to say but I feel like I've left a lot out on the core on the Cocodona course so this year if I feel like I have just put it all out there done my best like I'll be really happy with that obviously I'd like to PR <laughs> yeah um but yeah I think just giving it my all essentially on like each section yeah cool that sounds like a good strategy. What was your second uh, question? Um, I don't remember. We'll end it there. <laughs> yeah. I'll just cut it right here. We're done. <laughs> okay. <laughs>